chestnuts are traditionally more of a wintery flavor, but I personally like them just as well the entire year. I basically use them specifically in this recipe when I would like a more indulgent, naturally sweet dessert. Let's see how it goes. For this recipe, first you need whipped cream. I personally never use whipped cream in a can because they contain sugar and freshly made is always better. So I'm gonna show you my method. I found that 250 to 300 milliliters is usually enough for four people in this recipe. There are two tricks with heavy cream. First, you need it to be cold in order to whip up. And second, you need good quality heavy cream. Let's see these two variables. First, how to make it cool. You can guarantee that the cream is cold by putting it in the fridge for 12 hours. But it also needs to stay cool once you start whipping it. So my recommendation is that you put all the tools you need for the whipped cream in the refrigerator so that they are just as cold as the cream. So the bowl and even the whisk. So the second thing is quality. Try getting the cream from markets and brands that you know carry good quality organic cream. The better quality the cream, the faster it's gonna beat up and additionally it can hold its peaks longer. And of course, the better the taste. You know you have good quality cream when it forms a solid block on the top of the bottle. That's what happened here and that is why it was harder to get out of the bottle. After that, there is nothing else to do but whip the cream. No need for sugar or anything else. So, as I've said, this cream is beating up pretty fast. First, it starts to thicken and then form the peaks. And eventually we get to the classic whipped cream texture. Be careful not to over whip it, because the cream can separate to the point where there is no going back. By the way, some people whisk the cream by hand, but I find that with the mixer it is faster and gives better results. But who knows, one day I might wake up wanting to hand whip the cream. Once the cream is ready, you can put it in a plastic container in the fridge and even use it the next day if there is any leftover. We are done with the first half of this recipe, now we need to make the chestnut puree. Fresh chestnuts are pretty hard to come by, especially in the summer. But I like this dessert in the summer as well, so I either get whole chestnuts vacuum packed and pre-cooked, whole frozen chestnuts or pureed frozen chestnuts. 100% chestnuts of course, without any sugar or additional flavorings. 250 grams I found is usually enough for 4 servings. In this video I am showing you the less self-explanatory method of using whole chestnuts. But this is just as easy. You just need to pour the chestnuts into a food processor and start blending. It doesn't really turn into a puree, it turns into more like small flakes. Once that is ready, it can go onto a plate. When you are using pre-made chestnut puree, you can just simply put that onto the plate and just mash it up with a fork. And after that comes the previously made whipped cream on the top. You can add additional flavor and sweetness with a spoonful of rum-soaked raisins. This is delicious as it is now, sometimes I like finishing it off with a dusting of cocoa powder. So this is a pretty easy recipe, the only thing that can seem excessive is making your own whipped cream. But as I said before, it makes such a difference, it is definitely worth it. So I hope you try this recipe and also you try making the whipped cream at home. Thanks for watching!